Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we're going to do a little bit of kind of like a little bit of a day in the life of it. We're going to go around and look at some various projects that we are working on and give you updates on how plants are growing, blooming and thriving here at Creekside Nursery. So uh, a lot of things are happening today. I am obviously up here at production. I am in uh, production number two. I've got Brenna here beside of me. It is a gorgeous Carolina blue sky day with warm temperatures. So what I want to do first is show you um, some caladiums that I just potted up last week. Of course, being in North Carolina, a zone 8A, caladiums grow beautifully for us here in our uh, southern heat and humidity. Caladiums are a um, an annual that are give you beautiful foliage. Think of it like if you're familiar with coleus, think of it like that, but um, ones that really thrive in the heat and the humidity. So if you're in a cooler area of the country or a very dry area of the country, caladiums may not be the best thing for you. Now, <laughs> we do caladiums uh, basically two ways here at Creekside Nursery. One, we have uh, for our retail customers, we bring them in from classic caladiums. We of course have the proven winner uh, caladiums, the heart to heart collection. And so we bring them in from classic caladiums. That is the grower of all the proven winner caladiums retail ready, meaning that they literally come off the truck and they go on the shelves at the retail garden center. They are ready to go very much like when you order plants from us, they are ready for you to go ahead and plant. So that is how we do it for the retail customers. This year though, we're also going to do it differently. We're going to grow our on. Now this is for uh, the gardens here at the nursery, primarily for the signature garden. These are the proven winners. There are two different varieties here. Um, if you are familiar with proven winners and how they work, you probably will notice they're like, Jenny, those are black pots. Those are not proven winners. You're absolutely correct. The corms are proven winners, but since this is for us and our production use only and going in the gardens, we put them in black pots. So, and then we, proven winners, we don't even have any tags for them. So what you're looking at right now, this is white star. And then down here, this is heart and soul. <laughs> so right now you're like, um, Jenny, they're pots and they're empty. And what in the world are you doing woman? So there are a couple of tricks when you are growing caladiums, you can order the corms. So it's not a bulb. It's called a corm, C-O-R-M, um, a corm from Proven Winners for your caladiums. I think you can also order them from various places as, you know, they're already sprouted, meaning they already have the foliage on them. In order to get caladiums to sprout, it is a bit of a a little bit of a challenging process. When we very first started growing caladiums for, for Proven Winners um, here at the Garden Center a couple years ago, we bought them as corms but it was really challenging to have them perfectly ready for the warm temperatures. Why is that? Well, let me tell you. So when you get a proven winter corm, they are nice and big. They are painted on one side. That white side tells you I go up. So the painted white means up and then the non painted side obviously means that it goes down. They are also already DI'd. DI'd means that they have been processed so that when they do sprout, they sprout um, really nice thick leaves and you get a nice fuller plant with just the, the fullness of the plant. So that is why we, they DI the, the corms. You go ahead and you put them in traditional potting soils, right? This is the potting soil that we're using for every other annual here on the property. And you bury them about one and a half to two inches deep. So in this square pot, there is one jumbo corm, about two, one and a half to two inches down in there. You'll notice that I have them on a heat mat because when you grow caladium corms, if you want to plant them directly outside, you're gonna have to wait until it gets nice and warm. You need to wait until your outside temperatures are consistently 60 degrees or higher. So you cannot dip below 60 degrees at night. Your soil temperature must be a minimum of 65 degrees. 
That is because at those lower than those temperatures, it stunts, it stops the growth, stunts, stops, whatever it is, the growth of the caladiums. That's why it was challenging for us to get so many to get going in a greenhouse because we don't have a tropical greenhouse. So you've got to keep it super warm. Therefore, we have them on heat mats. The heat mats are actually set on, I think like 80 degrees. Um, and each tray, each level of this has a thermostat that comes right in here. So at the, at the tip of this, right, you see that metal, you stick that down into your soil uh, because if you have heat mats, it's really important to have a thermostat that goes with it. So they're all connected here to the thermostat. So you can see that right now the temperature is 69.8 degrees. When I plugged them in this morning, they were, uh, the soil was at like 53, 54. Um, this one is at 60. And then I've got one down here at 61 degrees as well. So it's coming up to temperature because I had to order new um, heat mats. I just got these off of Amazon, y'all. Um, it is, let me, let me show you the box. Um, I've never used this brand before. Uh, Vision, I'm gonna say maybe. Um, no, Vivison, there you go. So that is it. Um, and it comes with, it is the heat mat and the digital thermostat combo together. I really like it. You can get them in different sizes. This was maybe like a, a 24 by 48, something like that. Um, and basically we have a hundred corms of each color. So we have two, sh two shelves um, of each color. So we will also go ahead and probably, I'm going to try to find some extra, um, greenhouse plastic that was left over and then just cover it because let it act as an insulator so that they don't dry out. Another thing that you have to think about when you're starting your corms um, is that your water temperature cannot be below that 65 degrees. All of our water comes from a well, so it is, especially this time of year, well, I mean, well water is pretty much consistently the same temperature. It is well below 65 degrees. So what I'm gonna do when, one, covering it in plastic will help, sorry, y'all, alarm's going off. Um, it will help retain the moisture so that they won't dry out as quickly. And then when I do water them, I am going to have my watering cans. I'm going to have like four or five of them sitting here filled with water so that they get nice and warm here in the greenhouse. So when I do have to water, it will basically be heated water. And that way we can get these babies to sprout and start growing and be nice and big and happy. So when it's time to plant the signature garden, they are ready to go and we are all good. So if you're interested in growing some caladium corms, I would highly recommend it. Um, you can, like I started some last year uh, in the garden. It was late in the season and they came up nicely, but it can take, depending on your temperatures, like three weeks before you start to see some growth. So don't give up hope. Just put them in the ground uh, and, and let them go. But temperature is key. You've got to have it hot. That's why we love them in the heat of the summer here in North Carolina, because the hotter and the more humid it is, the happier these plants are, and they grow and bloom and thrive and are stunning. So there you go. Oh, yes. So while we're here, we're just gonna take a quick little peek see. Not gonna get too into it because they're they're working, but uh, shipping has begun for the online orders. They are starting with the warmest zones. So all of you hot, hot people, you have got some plants headed your way. So that is a very exciting. So they have been uh, busy getting everything together. And it's like I said, starting with the hottest zones, working our way to the cool zones. So just know that shipping has begun. If you have any kind of questions about your orders, any kind of question about an online order, if you will please email right here at the bottom, orders at gardeningwithcreekside.com. They will get to you very quickly. A lot of times they won't even email you. They'll just give you a buzz because talking to somebody on the phone can be so much more effective sometimes than uh, answering an email. So just know that they will get to you. Uh, if you, you know, email in the afternoon, it'll be the next business day. And then for the weekend, if you email on like a Friday afternoon, they'll get to you first thing Monday morning for sure. But they are great. 
We are in the uh, greenhouse that has the first set of annuals in here. We have got the Super Tunia Latte down there. I don't know if you can see her kind of in the back. She is blooming. We've got the first color of the new Super Tunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid. This is the petunia that I am going to have planted in mass around the fountain at the nursery. And that is why um, our friends at Classic Caladiums sent me those two different caladiums because I told them, I said, I'm going to be doing hoopla vivid orchid in mass and I need uh, caladiums that will complement and go with that really well. So that is why they sent me White Star and Heart and Soul. So this is going to be so much fun. I tell you, I am so tempted to be putting plants in the ground, but I'm watching myself because just like this morning and yesterday we were below freezing um, but the plants on the uh, patio you saw me plant those two urns they are doing great and could handle those temperatures just fine and then this is is this royal velvet let's see uh yes isn't royal velvet just spectacular so pretty with those dark dark velvety purple flowers on them just gorgeous all right now, what we're going to do is we're going to hop down. Jerry and Cece and Leela are potting up some perennials. I want to show you how we're doing that because we're doing it differently than we do traditionally do. And then we show you some of the fun plants uh, as they're growing and blooming and thriving and just having so much fun. So let's hop down there. What you think, boo-boo? Yes, my friends, we're going back old school on potting some of these perennials. The uh, folks, I'm getting ready to join them. Uh, they're, they're working so fast, they're almost done. But we are potting up the some more bare root perennials from Walter's Gardens, uh, of course, who we love getting our perennials from. Uh, a great, quote, problem with Walter's Gardens and their bare root perennials is that um, they're so big that sometimes it is challenging to pot their bare roots using the potting machine and the conveyor belts and all of that other stuff. We did that in the beginning of like this season, um, and but when we were sending the pots through the potting machine, of course it fills the pot full of soil, but then you would have to remove some of the soil because the bare roots are so big and you have to put them in and then put the soil back on top of it. So, and then you have to conveyor them out here onto the pad where they are growing. So Jerry was thinking, he was like, you know what, why don't we just kind of go back old school and put the soil on the trailer and that way we can just be right here on the pad much closer to it not going to have to walk nearly as far and it makes it easier when we're putting um, the plants all together so what they have is with the Kubota they've already gone ahead and pulled the pulled the uh, the plants and got the tags, got everything for them. So for example, this right here is, oh, so a bleeding heart. So you can see what a beautiful set of roots that this bleeding heart has, right? Everything needs to go up, you know, under the ground in the pot right to that point. Um, so what they do is they have it all set out here and then they've got, this is the candy tuft. So they're working on candy tuft right now. So as CC is, she'll demonstrate one for me. She's a great demonstrator. So she just kind of puts a little bit of the soil in there, then plops the root in there, holds it, and then just backfills. So it's actually a whole lot faster to do it this way than to have to send them through the potting machine, send it down the line, empty out some of the soil, put the root in, then put the soil back in. So it makes it nice and easy, and then boom, there you go. It's ready to go. Now, you might notice, those of you that are very astute will notice that we are using a different soil here. This is not our the Berger potting soil that we using on all of the annuals. This is our blend that has, um, it is compost and it is the pine bark vines. So you have chunks of pine bark in here, right? So you can see that and then it has, everything else is compost. Perennials tend, perennials and shrubs like to have more of a well draining soil. Now you absolutely can use the potting soil. We did that on probably half of them, but this is also going to be a little experiment to see how these plants grow directly in here. So Jerry's got the candy tuft that he's putting in we have grown our annuals in this like in the flower beds uh, we did it last year 
where we put brought a bunch of this in and then just piled our annual beds up high and the annuals grew unbelievably well in it. We did it in the berm, the shrubs and the perennials all grew so well directly in this. So doing this kind of process, we're like, let's just try it. Let's just see what happens because right gardening is one huge experiment. So we're, we're putting our mouth our money where our mouth is whatever and we are showing you that we're gonna try some things too now give you an idea look all of this whole pad right here are those perennials that are growing now these are all for the garden center because you'll notice that they are in the um, gallon containers and we have got everything here from like we've got the Agastache right here. This is the queen nectarine, um, meant to be queen nectarine. And then right behind that is the meant to be royal raspberry. This is such a great late season perennial that loves the heat. It thrives in our humidity. The pollinators love this plant. I think out of the two favorite, out of these two, my favorite might be the queen nectarine just because it's such a unique color in the garden. Um, but those are so much fun. We've got echinacea, we've got uh, shasta daisies back here. We've got all sorts of monarda, both areas right here. These are great plants for your pollinators and that just absolutely thrive. You'll notice we even have, uh, for the time being, we are actually have hostas out here. And you're like, Jimmy, why in the world do you have hostas growing out in the full sun on top of black plastic? Well, um, we need some heat and we need to get these babies going. And they have, you can see, your little hosta sprout is coming up. Once they get the foliage on them, right? So we get foliage on them and those days get longer. The sun gets more intense. At that time, we will then take them and move them down to the nursery. We have a shaded area down there. Um, so we will move them to that spot and let them continue to grow and really develop their roots down there. But for the time being, putting this them out here where it's nice and warm and toasty, sun is not crazy strong right now and they'll do great. So that is, um, why we have hostas growing in the full sun. One, if you are not familiar with this plant or you don't have this plant, I would, I would love for you to try this out. This is Drops of Jupiter. Uh, it is an oregano. So you know oregano as a as a culinary herb, right? Well, this is more of an ornamental oregano. I suppose you could eat it if you wanted to. It's not probably has a, as strong as a flavor as the culinary oregano. What's so fun about Drops of Jupiter is the color. It is a great chartreuse, yellow, lime green. It is a mounded habit until it starts blooming. And then when it blooms, it will get to be about two feet tall. And it does these really, really pretty um, pink flowers on it. It is a full sun garden, hardy in zones four to nine, and it will make a nice mound. Even for me in North Carolina, I keep some foliage year round, but it just turns this beautiful chartreuse color. I'll have to check uh, to see how mine are doing in the backyard. Uh, maybe throw up a picture there for you, but just a great, bright pop of color, extremely low maintenance on that. So that is really fun and something that I would encourage you to check out because I think it's one of those plants that you don't get like talk about a lot, but it really is a very fun plant. So uh, things are developing in here and we're gonna get the rest of those perennials potted up. Now, let me uh, show you really quickly. We're gonna pop here into the new production house because I wanna show you how full it is. It's busting at the seams, people. I think we need a bigger greenhouse. <laughs> this is the brand new greenhouse that we built uh, this past fall. And this is the 90 by 96 greenhouse. And it is just about completely full. The sides are going up because the thermostat says, hey, we're getting a little toasty in here. So they're going up, cool down, and then they cut, they'll, they'll lower themselves back down. But everything in here that you see is what we call a grande size container. So it's that proven winners, that 10 count tray, and it is grandes. These are, like I said, this is a 96 foot long. So yes, we have some sidewalks in here, uh, but essentially 96 feet down and 90 feet wide and absolutely full of 
annuals that are growing in here. There are a few perennials that are for the online sales. So we kind of mark those with the pink flags right where Brenna was. So we know that that means, okay, this is not retail. This is for um, the e-commerce. So we have those. Also, uh, so the perennials are growing in here. If it's in a black pot, that means it is a non-branded plant. It is not a proven winners. We get asked, do you only grow proven winners? No, we grow a lot of proven winners, but we grow things that are not proven winners. For example, phenomenal lavender. I don't think we've talked about this this season. Um, so we have got the phenomenal lavender that is growing right beside my other favorite perennial, the Ascot Rainbow. Y'all, these two perennials thrive in the South. If you have had problems with growing um, lavender in the past and you are a Southerner and um, say like the Sweet Romance from Proven Winners doesn't do well for you, I really encourage you to try Phenomenal. It is truly a phenomenal plant. I love this plant. It is the only lavender I will ever grow because it thrives. Even the heat and humidity, uh, my red clay soil, it does great try phenomenal lavender. We've got some Euchara, we've got Copper King right here, and then um, we've got the uh, Chartreuse on the loose. This is that beautiful, brightly colored Nepeta from our friends at Walters Gardens. Um, similar to the Drops of Oregano, except this is a catnip. Does purple flowers instead of pink flowers, and just is a full sun, mounded habit, stunning, stunning plant. Of course, you've got your serendipity alliums from Proven Winners. We've got um, the day lilies, right? And then look at this. This plant is loving this, <laughs> loving this greenhouse and loving this environment. This is, of course, the dark side of the moon. Look at that. Isn't that fun? It's just popping up and just so happy right there. My goodness. So everything is the grande, the court. Um, all of this, remember, is for the gardens at the house. So everything is growing quite nicely. I do have my little stash down here at the bottom, which is, uh, looks like it needs some water. So you can tell uh, that your plants need water when they start looking a little droopy like this. So this is the new Firefly Red Pop. This is an Achillea, a um, Yarrow. So you can see where it's a little droopy. So I need to shoot her with some water. My Baptisia back there, that's a new one from Walters that golden anniversary Baptisia, that's gonna be really fun because it has that chartreuse color um, and with blue flowers. So these guys are doing great. I probably could go ahead and start putting some out into the gardens. You can see the hostas, right? They have just exploded and popped up. So this is gonna be super, super fun. Our friends at Walters Gardens will send us the new introductions just like the Proven Winners folks send us the new annual introductions. They send us the perennial introductions so that we can test them out and see how they're doing. But everything is just thriving. You can tell that we had to come over here to the concrete pad, which we knew we were gonna have to. So you can see we've got the pink flags here. All of those guys are for the e-commerce. These are all annuals here. And then on this side, no pink flags. So that means that these are gonna be, you know, for the retail garden center. Uh, but we just keep moving forward and the potting machine just keeps getting moved down further and further. So <laughs> I think this is where it's gonna stay for now because uh, it is a great spot that Jerry can get in here. He can fill the soil up. Obviously you see the conveyor belt shooting out so we can either go up to the greenhouse or we can go ahead and put the arm on it and then send it out um, out the front door and put it on trailers or racks or whatever it is that we need to put on there. But yes, it is a very, very busy day. We, uh, <laughs> our family, just a little side story. So our family just got back last night uh, from the Phoenix area and we had one of our sweet, precious, adorable, love this, she's not a girl anymore, she's a lady, uh, Grace got married. So Grace was our one and only babysitter for our kids when they were, when they were young and Grace, you know, just was absolutely a member of our family, took great care of our kids, still takes great care of our kids and our girls and keeps up with them. And every time she comes back home, um, they go out and enjoy each other together. Um, but 
she got married to her her husband Ben and so we went out to Phoenix we flew into Phoenix we stayed in Scottsdale and then the, the wedding was like an hour east of that um, so we went out had an absolutely fantastic time I know we have got viewers and customers in the Phoenix area okay I am insanely jealous of your weather right now I want to bottle it up and keep it because it was the most glorious weather ever cool in the morning and then dry dry air there was no humidity and the days warmed up oh it was stunning we had the best time so much fun cactus everywhere it was just crazy even though we came back to north carolina and the trees haven't flushed out yet you want to talk about two completely different environments but so much fun to visit um, so those of you that live in that Phoenix, Scottsdale, Glendale, that whole kind of area, we were with you this past weekend and had a great time and uh, got to just have a great time. So anyway, then you put the time change in that. Arizona doesn't observe the daylight savings time. So already being two hours behind and then the time changed and then we're three hours behind. We, we don't even know what day it is, where we are, what time it is. We're just kind of going off of what our stomachs tell us. And when we're tired, we go to bed. So this has been kind of a nice day to kind of ease back into reality and try to get our bodies to adjust to whatever time it is. Um, so it's just a nice day to get back in the groove of things, looking at plants, checking on plants, checking on the garden because the garden is exploding. The rest of the week, I am going to be in the garden planting shrubs, perennials, and yes, even some annuals. So make sure you stay tuned because uh, the itch has begun and my garden is telling me that I can go ahead and start putting some things in cautiously. Perennials and shrubs, trees, it's fine. You're good. Uh, it's the annuals that we're going to have to be a little bit careful about, but lots of fun. Um, so if you have not done online orders with us and you want to, because I know a lot of people say, uh, I haven't placed my order yet, but I'm waiting on doing it. I would encourage you to go ahead and do that because we're going to get to the point where things start selling out and then we can't get more of it from proven winners or from Walters or for whomever we get it from. So if you're interested in ordering, I would really encourage you to do that. We're still marked as a pre-order on the website. Um, if you're in those warmer zones, we will get those out to you. Um, but because we have some people that are in zone like three and four, obviously we're not sending you plants right now. You're still under snow. We are aware of what you know, growing zone that you're in and we will send it to you at the appropriate time. But if you're interested in doing those orders, I would really encourage you to do it now. So that way you can make sure that you get the plants that you want. Um, but yeah, we're just going to keep on doing our thing here today and enjoy being outside, enjoy being home. Uh, I got a lot of laundry to do. <laughs> it's a great thing. All right, my friends, as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have an amazing day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.